App Inventor is composed of two distinct interfaces. The first is the design editor, which you see here. This is where we put in most of the user interface elements. It's also where we add other non-visible components, such as database functionality, etc. We will be looking at the second interface, the blocks editor, in just a moment. For right now, we're going to start adding some components. You'll see on the left-hand column here, the uh, palette column has the components that we'll use to make applications. We have a basic palette that has things like buttons, canvases, checkbox, etc. A media palette that has media components that we can add media functionality to our Android applications. We also have animation and social and sensors and screen arrangement components, other stuff, uh, including some advanced components such as the activity starter and text to speech. And we also have some stuff that's still in development, such as the not ready for prime time. For the example of our Hello Per tutorial, we're going to be using some of the very basic, such as the label. Now, to add components to our program, we're going to drag from the palette to the representation of a phone we see in the center of the screen. We see here this looks like a, a basic interface of an Android phone. And we're going to drag the label and we're going to drag a button onto that interface. And you'll see that there's defaults for the text for the label and the text for the button. You'll see that this viewer central portion, this viewer column, um, is kind of where we have a what you see is what you get interface. It is important to note that what you do see on this viewer interface is not in fact what you will be seeing on your phone. You should be running your tutorial and most design steps using your Android phone connected to the computer. All right, so we see we have added a label, and we see when we select a component in the viewer that the properties in the properties column on the right side of our design interface changes. Each of these properties change the look, the feel, or some interactive element of the component we selected, such as this button here. So, for instance, for the label, if we select the label, we can, in the components column, rename that label and call it our kitty label and that will now show up as the kitty label in the components column. This is important for when we switch over to the blocks editor because then we'll know what blocks we're using because they will be labeled kitty label. Alright, the properties can be changed for this element by changing the fields. So we see the text here, text for label 1 can be changed. We can change that to pet the kitty. Once we hit enter we can see that represented both here and on our connected Android device. We can also change the background color to something uh, more attractive and change the text color by selecting the color picker and selecting the color. So we see we change the text to yellow. It's not big enough so we can make it bold and we can even increase the font size by changing that number. We can do the same thing for the properties of the button by either selecting the button in the viewer or selecting the button in the components column. We can then change the text hit enter and we can see that that button changes. Let's say pet me. We also can see here that an image can be overlaid on a button to make it more attractive or indicate its functionality. So we'll click on that and notice that it gives us a drop down which includes a list of media that may have been pre-added to the media column here or we can click add and add the media from our downloaded media location. We'll select our downloaded kitty image and upload it. You'll notice an uploading indicator at the top of the screen. When the kitty graphic shows up in the media column, we know that it's available. Now we're going to add one more component to the center viewer column, and that is the sound component. 
Now every component we have added to the screen up to this point has been visible. We can see it. We can see the label and we can see our button which now looks like a kitty. We can add a sound component by clicking and dragging it but it doesn't show up on the screen. It drops below the screen to this non-visible components area. It can still be selected either here in the viewer column or in the components column to set the properties active so we can change it. So we can select the source and once again we can either add media that has been added previously or click the add button and upload a sound. We have a meow sound so let's upload that meow sound. Once again we'll notice an uploading notification and eventually it will show up as being uploaded. So at this point we have the basic components in place. Now let's switch over to the blocks editor and add the functionality or the logic, the actual programming part to our application. This is the block editor. Every component we add on the front end adds another drawer of blocks we can use to create logic. For instance, the button we place, when we click that button's name, opens the drawer of the components that we can call. We are going to use this when button one click event. A very logical sounding button, when the button is clicked, do something. What do we want it to do? Well, remember we uploaded a meow sound and we put that in the sound one component. We want that sound to play. You'll notice that the shape of the sound one play block fits nicely into our button one click. And now we have created a complete sentence, if you will, in the language of App Inventor. When button one is clicked, do the sound one play. It makes a lot of sense. There are also built-in buttons to handle such things as control, logic, and mathematical statements. So that's it for our quick overview. At this point on your Android phone you should see the fully running application. You can <coughs> click the kitty and hear it meow. So good luck guys and go invent some incredible Android applications.